All right, guys, today we're going to uh, break down the stock throttle body, and I'm going to show you this Premium Japan throttle convert kit. So this kit will prevent any check engine lights, and your throttle pedal will feel slightly stiffer, but uh, not to the point where it's just the throttle lock alone. I've tried the throttle lock by itself. It works really well, but the way that the throttle body um, and the throttle motor are controlled by in the stock throttle body, um, it puts a lot of stress on the APPS sensor and the throttle motor itself um, because when the stock ECU is trying to fight you opening the throttle. So this uh, throttle convert kit, I'll take it apart and show you all the pieces. I have it installed right now in my throttle body, so I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to show you all of the pieces that are fit in there the way it is. I'm going to take that off and show you where everything goes um, and all the little tricks that I had to use to get it together. Um, so let's dive in see the tools laid out here. It's a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter, some picks, uh, you need an eight millimeter, um, a pry tool, vice grip. You might need this to help pull the gears out. So I'll show you how we're going to use everything. First thing we're going to do is remove the, uh, APPS sensor and the throttle cable holder. So that's just a 10 millimeter and those two bolts on the throttle cable bracket removed. You're going to remove the four eight millimeter bolts on the APPS sensor and then remove that. Don't touch the nut in the middle. So underneath the APPS sensor, I have the excessive throttle lock installed. The premium Japan kit actually comes with another piece over here and I'm going to explain why I wasn't able to use that piece. So with the premium Japan kit, you get the two pieces that are on top. It's a throttle lock essentially and then a locator pin that you push into uh, this plastic hole on the throttle body itself. So these two pieces at first glance look the same. However, when I place the throttle lock on top of this one, you can see that by the design, they're, they're lined up here on this side, but over here it hangs open about it hangs over maybe an eighth of an inch uh, or maybe a sixteenth of an inch more than the throttle lock, uh, the way it lines up. So that was a significant issue for me, um, is that I wasn't able to use this piece. When I had this piece installed, the car would not hold idle. It would have a really broken, like revving up to 2000 or 2500 RPM and then falling on its face. I got a check engine light that the throttle plate was basically stuck open. No matter how I adjusted this piece or there's a couple um, stopper locators on the throttle body that I was trying to adjust with Allen keys, none of that mattered. What actually fixed it was installing the throttle lock. So perhaps I got a uh, deformed or um, incorrect piece. Maybe someone gave me the wrong part for this, but it just didn't work for me. Luckily, I had a throttle lock on hand and this does the exact same thing. So I ended up using this. So now looking at the throttle body, I'm going to uh, leave it with the APPS sensor off and I'm going to remove the throttle motor now and let's do it. So on the side of the throttle body, you have the TPS and the plastic cover for the throttle motor. Uh, those all come off with Phillips screwdriver. With the screws removed all around. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, pry off this top plastic cover. Um, it With a little wiggle, it should come right Here's off. what it looks like with the top cover removed. Again, this is with the Premium Japan kit installed. I'm going to show you the pieces that are installed and how they go. I'll just hold the camera here so you can get an idea of the orientation of how everything works. And then I'm going to go ahead. Now I'm going to remove the throttle motor itself with these three Phillips screws. You can see here with the throttle motor removed, the throttle motor meshes with the gear on the outside of this wheel. You need a 12 millimeter for this nut right here. Let's go ahead and take that off. Here's a look with the nut removed. I'm going to go ahead and remove pieces from this stack right here, one by one. Here's the top piece that I removed. That's the orientation it was in. I'll go ahead and remove the next piece. This is with the second piece removed. This piece right here, there's a brass bushing that was in the middle. Um, and then there's a, a plastic washer spacer, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and remove those, those two items and then this third bottom, this metal piece here, I'm going to show you we need to do something special to make sure that uh, we hold the spring in place. Okay, so with everything else removed, I'm going to go ahead and try as best as I can to get a picture of this. Okay, I'm switching to uh, the flash on a little closer on this one. So this last plate, you have to be very careful because if you look in there, there's actually a spring 
that is being held on a, a rod on this plate. If you pull this plate out, this spring is going to unwind, and then you're going to have to wind it back up and hold it with something in this little, in that little dimple that you see uh, on the right, and then you'll have to slip the gear in. So before I take this plate out, I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably slide an Allen wrench into that hole and I'm going to use a pick to grab the spring and wrap it around the Allen wrench so it'll hold the spring in place while I remove the gear. So I'll go ahead and do that now. It's going to be impossible to do that while I hold the camera, but you can see the spring tab there and I'll get a video of it when it's all held in place. This, uh, I didn't do this the first time. The instructions that I had weren't very clear and it unwound and it took me a little bit uh, using the picks to try to spin the the uh, spring around. So here you can see I shoved an Allen wrench, that's actually the perfect size, um, into that hole that was there, a little dimple, and then I have the sp internal spring trapped behind it. So now this third gear plate will come right out and I'm going to put the stock components back in. Here you can get a closer look with the Allen key in the hole holding the spring. This is with everything else removed. I'm going to go ahead and put the stock gears back in and then just to show you, what they look like, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the premium Japan stuff back in. You have this gear that points face down and it has a rod similar to what the premium Japan is. It would be meshed with this gear um, and it might be a little bit difficult to remove. I'm not going to push it all the way down because uh, I had to use a pry tool um, to pry under it gently to get it out, but uh, you see how that goes. I'm just going to stack the stock components on top of it so you know what to remove. This is the way that the components would stack originally. You'd have the gear and then you'd have the original uh, copper sleeve, and then you'd have your uh, little flange that interacts with the TPS sensor. Um, it's raised up a little bit just because I don't have it meshed in with the gear, but you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and take these components out and put the Premium Japan stuff back in. So now I've reassembled it with the Premium Japan pieces. You can see that's all in there. I've still got the spring tension held with the Allen key. I'm going to go ahead and gently release that so it catches on the new arm from the Premium Japan piece. You can see I have the whole thing together. I have the Allen wrench pulled out. I'm going to go ahead and tighten down this 12 millimeter nut. It doesn't have to be very tight, just secured. And then I'm going to put the throttle motor back on and the TPS back on and we'll put this back together. Here we've got the throttle motor back installed. I'm going to go ahead and put the plastic cover on and screw it down with these Phillips screws. And then we'll put the uh, throttle lock and the APPS sensor back on. Here's the throttle body with the cover and the TPS back on. Let's work on the APPS side. So I'm going to try my best to show you why I wasn't able to use the metal piece that's on top versus the throttle lock. Here you can see they should be the same exact measurements, but you can see that the Premium Japan piece is that entire metal piece hung over longer in this dimension than this plastic piece. They basically line up right there. And on this end, it's too long. So it was holding the throttle open when I installed the APPS sensor. Uh, so this is no good for me. I would have to cut and bend this to make it work. But luckily, this little piece of plastic is the right size. And I had this actually from using it previously. So I'm going to go ahead and install this guy in the and the APPS sensor. And we'll be good to install the throttle body. So anybody that's familiar with the throttle lock will know that typically when you move the throttle plate, uh, you get no throttle movement for about 80% of the pedal, and then it moves like this much, maybe less, uh, when you go full throttle. So with the throttle lock, I can get full wide open. This is with the Premium Japan and the throttle lock, but with just the throttle lock, this will work as well. Um, the Premium Japan kit just also modifies the throttle motor side um, so that it doesn't, the stock ECU doesn't interfere as much and try to close the throttle. So you can see the operation here. Gives you full control.